Welcome to Computer Science Principles. Follow along with the curriculum at bjc.edc.org. Unit 3. Lists. Lab 1. Page 3. Modeling Sentence Structures. Okay, so inside Unit 3 Lists, Lab 1, Modeling Sentence Structures. So on this page, you'll use abstraction to create a sentence builder project that builds complicated sentences like the little elephant runs happily around the wise pizza by joining words that represent things, actions, modifiers, and so on. The join block connects strings of characters given as inputs without adding spaces like this. Notice the uh, the the gaps here for the items, they just stick them all together. The elephant climbs, the elephant climbs. No spaces, and so we would need to include a space between each of those words when we join everything together. The join words block does the same and adds a space between the inputs like this. So join words is treating each as words. Just join just pushes everything together. Okay. If there is time, click on the script below to load it in Snap. It says, feel free to change the list to use your own nouns, verbs, etc. In fact, you may find you need to change some of the words in the sentences to make it work the way you want. So let's see what we've got. We've got nouns, and nouns is a variable, and it's a list of variables. It's a list of nouns, list of words. One, two, three, four, five. There are five items in this list. Verbs is a variable list where that also has five words. Adjectives have six words. Determiners have three, four, five, six. Adverbs have three words. And prepositions have four words. So these variables are set to these lists at the very start of the script. Okay, thinking out loud, Alfie and Betty are trying to use the list of words to build sentences. Betty says the sentence the elephant climbs is just an example. Let's build a block that joins any determiner with a noun and a verb. So determiner, noun, and verb. So they make this. Looks good to me, Alfie says. Let's run it and see what happens. Betty clicks and they see this. So let's take a look what's happening. It's taking the determiners, which is the, a, my, your, his, her. It's taking every single item on this list, because that's a list, that variable is a list. It's joining it with every noun, and then it's joining it with every verb power supply and there's only a gap there because within our list power supply has a gap and then we've got runs jumps sits which is all of the verbs and really it sits down that's within the verb and then climbs and talks so it's just pushing everything together Betty says wait oh these are all the words in those lists we want just one from each of these lists Okay, so if there's time, fix their expression so it selects one random item from each of these three lists and puts spaces between the words. Um, create a reporter called Simple Sentence that uses the expression to generate the random sentences. All right, so let's create a reporter. I'm going to make a block, it's an operator. To call it simple sentences. It's a reporter block. Press OK. All right. So this is what we need it to do. We need it to take um, a determiner, a noun, and a verb, and to make a random sentence. So variables: determiner, noun, and verb and we need to choose a random item. Now keep in mind each of these are a list. 
So if we go to operator, actually variables, if we go to random item, so item random of determiner, and then item random, and you know, let's actually duplicate this, save us a little bit of time, item random of noun, item random of verb, but now we need to join these. So we could join them with a space, or we could choose to join words. So if we tell it that these are words, then what we can do is it should allow us and report a little space. It should allow us to join these with a space in between them. So this is simple sentences and let's apply. Let's say that this is okay. Let's drag out the simple sentences block and click. The boy sits down. The pizza sits down. His boy talks. His pizza talks. Her elephant jumps. So it looks like it's working. And because inside here we used the join words instead of just join, it's automatically putting a space after each of these between them. Okay, so next, number three, it says make three of the reporters that report different type different kinds of phrases. So 3A is looking for a noun phrase, which should join words from three categories to create phrases like the little boy at random. So let's take a look. So the little boy would be first a determiner, then an adjective, and then a noun. So for us to make a noun phrase, we're going to have to make a block. It's an operator, it's a reporter. Noun phrase. And what we're doing is we're choosing a random item from each of these lists. So these variables are lists, let's not forget that. So we are going to choose item random let's duplicate this a couple of times because we need to do it for each so that should do it and we need to join these three things they are words so we're going to do join words so that we have the space in between them there's three items that we're going to join let's make sure that we've got them in the right order so determiner, adjective, noun. So let's apply that. Scroll down, noun phrase. Let's see what this produces. My little pizza, his red-haired pizza, his wise pizza, his tired girl, his young elephant. So it seems to work. That was the noun phrase. The next one, a prepositional phrase, should combine a preposition with a noun phrase. So it combines a preposition with a noun phrase to create phrases like near the little boy or over a wise pizza so prepositional phrase so let's create a new block call it prepositional phrase now this is still an operator and a reporter now inside this we are going to include the noun phrase so i'm going to duplicate the noun phrase and what's happening here is that we need to join the noun phrase with another word so we're doing join words the noun phrase is going to come here and the preposition the preposition is going to come in front now if I leave it like this there's a problem because prepositions is a list whereas we just want a random item from that list so I'm going to choose a random item of prepositions and that's going to come in front now let's see what's going to happen the noun phrase is just going to be a random uh, noun phrase we are then taking a random item from the list of prepositions and then we're joining the words so it will put a space between them and keep in mind that we have a custom block inside a custom block so this is definitely a form of abstraction because we're taking multiple ideas 
with complexity and combining them into a single block. So the prepositional phrase now says, in front of her wise pizza, in front of a little power supply, over his silly, near my tired girl. And so this is randomly choosing everything. Okay, so that's prepositional phrase. Next, defining prepositional phrase using the noun phrase block is a good example of abstraction. So that's what we mentioned. If you later change noun phrase to include people's names, prepositional phrase will still work. So that means any changes that we're making to noun phrase will automatically update within the prepositional phrase. Okay, next, 3C. Verb phrase should join a verb and an adverb to create phrases like jumps sadly or naps quickly, etc. So verb phrase. So make a block. Operator, reporter, verb phrase. Okay. So it's the verb and then the adverb. So I'm going to join, join words. Um, we need to choose a random item. We need to do this twice. Random item from, from the verb. And then we need to combine that with a random item from, oh, not an adjective, an adverb. A word that describes a verb is an adverb. So let's take a look. Join report, joining the words, random verb plus random adverb. Okay, so that's our phrase, our verb phrase. Let's test this one. Talks happily, sits down happily, climbs quickly, sits down angrily. Okay, so that seems to be working as well. Okay, number four, then make a reporter complex sentence that combines a noun phrase, a verb phrase, and a prepositional phrase noun, verb, and prepositional phrase. And this is called complex sentence. So complex sentence. Okay, and we have to combine, we have to combine a noun, verb, and prepositional phrase. So combine. Um, join, right? Join a noun phrase, verb phrase, then prepositional phrase. And we're choosing the join, the join uh, words so that we always have a space in between as well. Okay, so I'm going to apply that, press OK. Go grab the complex sentence. Let's see what this gives us. His young girl jumps angrily. Mm. Disappeared too quick. Your tired girl sits down happily toward your red-haired pizza. Her tired power supply runs happily over the tired elephant. My young pizza climbs angrily near her silly power supply. Your tired girl talks happily toward a tired pizza. Okay, so it's all looking good, even though some bizarre sentences. Okay, so in the take it further section, the extension activities, um, it explains that this is just a super small beginning toward teaching the computer to understand English and sentence structure. If you find this very interesting, you can keep working through this, the take it further. Otherwise, you can definitely just skip over and move to the next page. Um, you don't have to do any of this. Um, just know that there's a long way from the simple or even what we labeled as a complex sentence to uh, writing a novel in computer code or just to uh, what we might imagine to be truly complex sentences. Um, anyways, here are a few suggestions to make your sentences even more interesting, but don't be limited to them. Be creative. So you can read through these and attempt them yourself. I'm not going to go into each of them because there's a lot of creative writing that's involved. Um, and though th those options should be really down to your, uh, your preference. The curriculum has been brought to you by Beauty and Joy of Computing in association with UC Berkeley. 
also the National Science Foundation, EDC, and the SEP program at the New York City Department of Education.